So I'm Martin, I'm the managing director of a data science company called Interlerts. I have 15 minutes for 18 slides, so I'm going to really be fast, okay? Uh, you can talk to me afterwards, I'll kind of rush you through a couple of ideas. It's a summary of being into this world of data science for 35 years, although 35 years ago we just called it statistics, okay? Um, so I'm going to talk to you about artificial intelligence. Is it real? Is it a threat? And what do you need to know from a finance perspective? Red herring. I don't know if you know that saying, when you go after something, that is not really the real problem. As my point is AI is important and extremely helpful, but make sure you go after it for the right reason. If you look at Google Trends, it's a funny tool to use. And if you look at what is hot, big data, hot, in search terms, machine learning is hot, data science is hot, artificial intelligence is hot, data quality is not hot, okay? <laughs> it's just so extremely boring, but it's mostly, um, it is the most important thing to focus on. So, is it true or not true? Normally I do a, I do a quiz, I don't have time for that. First question is, the IT manager knows where the data is. No. Wrong. Technology will make things easy. Yes, yes mix, it mix, it mix, it mix. It helps, but it also helps to confuse, right? Our brain is a computer. Oh, that's good. Normally I hear yes, so you're pretty educated. <laughs> AI will take over humanity. Yes and no, yes and no. So the people who said yes, please talk to me after, okay? <laughs> AI is plug and play. <laughs> you're kidding, right? I know you're kidding. An algorithm, let's start with that. Because we talk algorithms, everyone wants algorithms. We don't know exactly what they are, but it's a very simple thing. I'm using a quote from a famous mathematician, David Belinsky, really great guy, and an algorithm is inherently stupid, okay? Just remember that, stupid. Artificial intelligence, there are many very good definitions of artificial intelligence. You can look them up. I don't find them really telling the simple story. The simple story on AI is sort, filter, select. Okay, sort, filter, select. And we're just confused because it goes so extremely fast. But nothing else than that is AI. It's kind of a bummer for all those techies and prophets that believe that it's gonna take over everything, but it's just sort, filter, select. And there is a statistical test attached to it, a probability. So it's not close to our brain, not even close if we would know how our brain works. It will never be, and every renowned computer scientist or neuroscientist will support this. We don't know. So the neural net is a nice model, but it doesn't, it's not a good metaphor. If you believe that metaphor, that our brain is a computer, you're gonna be scared because computers are gonna be faster, so they're gonna be better than us. It's just not the case. It's, it's just a completely wrong metaphor. It's important because many people are just afraid of AI. So let's understand it's simple, it's stupid, and it doesn't think. I got into a big role with a Google guy who was writing in a very nice article. The model thinks, the algorithm thinks. I said it doesn't think, it calculates. Calculates and does a statistical test. So very narrow things AI can do. Very well-defined things AI can be extremely helpful and we all experience that every day. So <clears throat> we are a data science company and we started off at the wrong end of the stick. We started with AI guys doing machine learning, but we found out you have to first get into this dark space of data, right? It's a big dark space. You have to kind of put your data to kind of a stargate to try to understand 
And start with something very simple. It's just business intelligence. Many people want AI, but need BI. You cannot land on Pluto before you land on the moon, okay? And many companies are not even there. <clears throat> Then, once you have your BI working for you, you can start exploring more advanced stuff. And eventually, you will also do more predictive stuff instead of only looking back. But most companies are not really good at looking back because they have not organized their data. So in the end, you can end there, but there's a journey to go. There's a journey to go. Picasso really understood things well. Computers are useless, they only give answers. Right? So, but there's stuff you can do. You know, it's not all doom and gloom. There's a lot of stuff you can do on the way on this journey. One of the things is to go through a rigid process of understanding the problem you're trying to tackle, which is ask the right questions. So computers are going to ask questions. You are to go ask questions because you have a brain. A computer doesn't have a brain. You have to look at the data sources. It's all about the data, so review the data sources. Gather and understand the data sources. Prepare, integrate, and explore. This is by far the biggest task, and I heard it this morning on a couple of talks already, is all about understanding the data. If I am in front of an IT audience, IT managers, and I ask them the simple question, do you have a data model of your organization? No one dares to raise his finger. And it, it's understandable because it has been horrendously complex. Microsoft ERP has 44,000 different tables. I don't even know how many SAP has, but it's a multiple of that, for sure. Even mid-sized ERP systems are also in the 25K different tables, right? So we are up to a big task, all of us. Even if you ask SAP, uh, they're not really willing, if they're able, to share these diagrams with you. And it's all about that. I overheard a discussion of some Heineken guys, I believe, and they were just talking about that, an agreed data model. Okay, this is hard to get. Okay, you gather then the domain knowledge and then we say, okay, we'll model the data because we're going to do something very smart with the data once you get there. And you can say, well, algorithms are free, which is in principle the truth. A lot of the important algorithms are free to, to get from the web. And your smart data scientists will know how to get there. But creating solutions out of it takes time and effort. Quite a lot of time and effort. And it all boils down, this is a chart I borrowed from a guy called, I think, Heckleton. And it's all about getting to the information as fast as you can. Getting to the data, understanding the data, preparing the data, making decisions. And the longer it takes, the more valued decrease you will have in your information. Then, there's nothing new under the sun, meaning all of you analyze data in different ways. You pivot, you regroup, you sort, you swap, you cleanse, and then you are looking for patterns, for correlations, causalities, That's what you were educated on. You can do that with tradi traditional tools and traditional techniques, and you can do it with AI techniques and machine learning and all of that. But in essence, nothing is really changing. Now, of course, there are things changing, and these are more linked to how to automate things like machine learning or AI. So let's assume you got to the state that you have the data, You got your proper BIs fit out, and now you want to do something more smart, like applying machine learning to your financial process, to detect anomalies, to detect fraud, to look for non-compliant stuff, whatever, risks. Then you might want to use machine learning. Now, you see the black box in the middle? That's the code of the machine learning. But then, all the things around it are stuff you need 
from an IT perspective to govern and manage this technology. And this is a big downside of, a, of machine learning versus traditional statistics and modeling. Uh, some of you know regression techniques, I guess, from school or even applied it. With regression, it's very simple. It's a formula. It's a very straight formula. You can read it and understand it. You understand the coefficients. With machine learning, it's much harder to understand what happens in the black box. So in order to make that manageable and auditable and replicable, you have to have a lot of IT around it. So the point here is automating AI is a really big task, an underestimated task. And it's been flagged right now as one of the big risks that we're heading into is automating AI. Doing a proof of concept and demonstrating that an algorithm can do its work, you do in kind of, you know, laboratory setting. And then everyone gets excited because the model is really good and it does really great stuff. But then bring it to life into production is a totally different ballgame. And many companies get stuck in that process because what they usually do, the guy or the girl that created the model is the guy or the girl that also put it into production. And that is where it completely goes wrong. So this is a heads up, just when you decided that you're going to do implementation of the great model that the guy came up with, that they programmed in Python, your IT guys are going to look here. Python, give me a break. I'm not going to do Python, right? So this, is involved, this involves quite a lot of engineering. And there's a big shortage on these type of people that can't implement. A while ago, I spent some time gathering the competencies that the so-called data scientists need to have. And I, I came up with 115, and I stopped counting. And in Holland, we have a saying, you're looking for the sheep with the five legs. Well, it's 115, to be honest. Um, so is this good or is it bad? The point I want to make is that is, no one is really an end-to-end -end data scientist. Right? Because it's impossible. It's so specialized. It's not only mathematics and statistics, it's a lot of engineering. There's a lot of business knowledge required. And you need to also be able to communicate, which is kind of very counterintuitive with these nerds, right? But in the end, everyone is a data scientist, in my opinion. Because we just concluded that you are pivoting, you are massaging, you are analyzing data. So, you know, it's kind of both. So it's important that we realize, and uh, we had a good discussion during lunch, companies hiring data scientists, you know, by the dozen almost, and they are disappointed because they end up doing the work of a data engineer. This is not what they came for, but this is what they have to do in order to do the cool stuff, right? So that's something you have to bear in mind if you're considering to hire a data scientist. Or when you're asking yourself the question, why are my data scientists leaving? It's because there's a mismatch with what they originally thought they were going to do for you. Some learnings. Um, we've done two big spin-offs, one in the accountancy and one in health. Um, focus on accountancy. Our learnings from this financial realm where we, what we basically did is we did, we fully automated audit, internal and external audit. So meaning we completely opened up the whole ERP box as well as the accountancy data for the auditors. We thought that was a smart thing to do. We gave them about 115 analytics. So what happened? 80% of them penalized with the number of insights we gave them. Okay, I didn't know how accountancy worked. I found out. An auditor doesn't want to see all the exceptions. I thought they want to see the exceptions. They don't. They want to do a sample of 100 or 1,000 and say, okay, I found three, and I can explain the three exceptions. But guess what? We found all exceptions. So what then has to happen is I have to look into all the exceptions. So they were not really happy with me. Okay? So there is a, a different dynamic. We had automated um, invoice checking. Uh, you know, normally 
An accountant goes in as a service, he takes a thousand of your invoices, he bills you by the hour, and he checks uh, you know, the consistency of the invoice, the pricing, the units, all of that. We did automated that. So we took away a large sum of their business. So where are they need to put their hours now? So of course, it can be a very helpful tool, and some of the larger players are using it like that. But the mid search accountant firms are saying, hey, you know, the client was very happy with me billing the hours. You know? So these were some of our learnings. Apart from the fact that, and this was also a discussion I, I heard, overheard earlier, the base level of automation for many companies is still very rudimentary. We talk about RPA, process improvement, the fundamentals of how ERP needs to work. And we saw that as an inhibitor also in, in the financial world, in particular in the accountancy. Then the role of the accountant, um, that needs to change. And I found out that they're mainly looking back and they're not looking forward because they're just wired that way. They are focused on compliance and regulation. And then on AI, we saw that the market regulation is absolutely not ready for AI type of approach. And I gave you a few examples, you know, um, to do a full audit, automated, really has a big impact on the whole audit framework. Okay, and the market doesn't have that. Great learning for us. Then we have another spin-off uh, company, which is in healthcare. And we went through the similar learning. I won't not bore you with that. But it was kind of interesting to me that it doesn't really depend on the industry. We all run when we want to apply new technology and AI specifically. And we see that we're running into business model challenges. You know, AI is great, but business model is more important. Regulation is an issue everywhere, although COVID is really making a change right now in healthcare, I can tell you. The role of the people that are using analytics needs to change because you will have the ability to look forward to stuff as opposed to only look backward and be focused on compliance. And then still back to the most fundamental problem is the what I call the XLS kingdoms. The world is run on XLS. I would say if Putin is really clever, he puts a bug in Excel and then they're all done, right? It's once and for all, very simple. And in, the, in, in healthcare, I wouldn't even go there because that's really a very complex um, area. And tech readiness. Although highly educated people with on average six years of university, fairly, I mean, okay, you might say my standards are high, but you know, if you want to be data-driven, you have to be understanding what data-driven means. And a lot of these professionals just do not have a clue. I'm not talking about you, of course, okay? So, um, I only have 15 minutes. Uh, so, some takeaways. Be sober-minded on technology. Work on the fundamentals. Statistics and data. Really fundamental. I see uh, guys coming from computer science or data science university, and they know about machine learning neural networks, but I ask them a simple question on statistics and they can't answer. If you can't define an, a very simple hypothesis of what you want to test with your model, we have a problem. And what goes for IT managers goes for junior data scientists. If you do not understand data modeling, you're never going to be a good data scientist. BI goes for AI. I think that's straightforward. I think data science is for all of us. And now one thing I haven't mentioned yet, it's really good to talk to people that claim to have implemented AI a bit longer. Because if you ask the right questions, you will find out that 90% of the time they're not implementing AI. Everyone is lying about it, with exceptions. In particular in the business area and in finance. They say we have AI, it's at best advanced BI, okay? Business rules. And I checked a lot of consulting sites. They, their claim is marketing and is not real, okay? Secondly, AI success stories are everywhere, but they are a tip of the iceberg. There are so many failures, no one wants to talk about, by the way, 
But talk about the failures, you learn much more than the so-called success stories. So that the last one. Yeah, oh, sorry. The complexity of automating AI, I mentioned that one. So there is no fast way of doing this. So this is not my quote, this is uh, Warren Buffett, I would never say something like that. Okay, but he can do it because he's one of the richest people in the world. He can be uh, politically incorrect, but I think he has a point, right? At this age, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't go there. Okay, so that was my 15 minutes. Uh, by the way, we are a data science company supporting venture building, supporting solution and project on data science and AI. And if you want to talk to me, I'm here the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. You succeeded the impossible. You waked up the audience. Okay. And it was very impactful. Thanks a lot.